Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel and happy Halloween. If you guys are into that, um, I never celebrated it growing up, so I definitely just forget that it ever exists. Um, it's not a big deal to me, but if it is to you guys, I hope you're having some safe fun and uh, definitely enjoy yourselves. Uh, today I want to talk about some dividend yielding stocks that are paying unusually high dividends right now. Um, and what I mean by right now is um, obviously a dividend yield is basically the amount that, that a stock gives in terms of yield and in terms of dollar amount um, divided by the share price. So if a stock drops by, by like 10% or something, um, then you'll notice that the yield percentage actually increases um, even if the yield amount does not. So no worries if that doesn't make sense. Um, basically, I'm probably going to talk about it a little more in detail, but I have three stocks for you that I think are at their value right now, some really good starting yield on costs. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, so the first of which uh, that I want to talk about is GOF. Um, and as you guys can see, you know, I'm not hiding this or anything. I'm getting absolutely butchered on my M1 Finance portfolio. So this is my actual like main portfolio. Um, and so aggressive um, is one of my pies and it's definitely getting hit pretty hard. Um, obviously, there's a lot of aggressive tech stocks in there. Uh, but today we're talking about some other ones. So the first stock on the list is this Guggenheim Strategic Opportunities Fund of Beneficial Interest. Wow, what a mouthful. Um, so at the moment right now, it's paying 11.5%. And I think yesterday um, it was paying closer to like 12%. Um, but I think it went up maybe a couple percent today. Uh, so it's not paying that high of a yield. Uh, but 11.5% is still pretty high. And obviously this thing has been selling off like crazy uh, ever since the start of September. So definitely kind of felt like this stock really wanted to go down. Um, it was sitting at a 52 week high um, here in July at the start of early July. And then it tried to make another high about a month later, but it didn't you know, didn't do a good job of that. Um, and it just kind of plummeted afterwards. So typically when you have a stock that pays maybe 10%, 11%, something like that, you definitely have to be careful in terms of capital appreciation. Uh, but when I see something like this, at the very least, all I care about is that it at least goes sideways. At worst, it should go sideways and not down. Um, but this one actually has potential to be in somewhat of an uptrend. Um, so I definitely like that. Um, that it, you know, it's not just going down like uh, most 11 percenters. So as a starting yield and the fact that it's about maybe, oh, I don't know, 10% off its 52 week high. Yeah, so currently it's about maybe 13% off the 52 week high. What an absolute bargain. So GOF, if you guys aren't into this one, this is something that I would recommend. Obviously, I'm down on it quite a bit. I didn't realize how many shares I was buying at the top. Um, but either way, this is my M1 Finance portfolio, so I'm not super concerned with um, with my capital appreciation right now or my you know like average cost or something like that. Obviously, I'm going to average in the more shares that I buy. Um, so I currently bump this one up to be 10% of my entire high savings portfolio. So obviously, I care about it a lot. The next stock on the list is AbV, ticker symbol ABBV. Um, so currently, AbV is paying... I want to say close to 4%. Um, so I do have it in my defensive pie. And AbbVie is a dividend aristocrat. And it's currently paying 4.71%, which is pretty, pretty awesome um, for any kind of dividend aristocrat. Not only is it a dividend aristocrat, but it's actually in the long-term uptrend. This is a weekly time frame. So each of these candlesticks represents a week. Um, both moving averages are sloping upwards. And we still have the 200-week moving average support. And then weekly RSI is getting close to oversold. It's currently at 31. Um, so this is definitely pretty hard to beat in terms of, you know, stocks that I would recommend. This one jumped out at me a lot. So I'm definitely liking the risk to reward set up here on Avi. If you guys are truly scared, then I would just place my stop loss maybe around like $69. Um, and, uh, and yeah, just see what happens. So I definitely like Avi. And uh, yeah. And so the last stock I want to talk about is Kellogg. So, um, by the way, so I'm naming each of these stocks in order of stocks that I'm most excited about. 
Um, so I'm, I was the most excited about JOF. I was the most, second most excited about Avi. Um, I'm still generally pretty excited about Kellogg, just not as much as the other two. Um, but in terms of a household name and the kind of security and consistent dividends that Kellogg can give you, I definitely still like Kellogg. So make no mistake, I still like this one a lot. Um, so Kellogg, the uptrend isn't as intact on the weekly time frame, uh, but clearly on the monthly time frame, this thing just, you know, grows and grows and grows. It's been around ever since the 70s, and you know Kellogg probably isn't going to go away uh, anytime soon. Um, so if we zoom out a little bit, there's basically three periods of extreme volatility. Um, there's this period right here, which was a 2000 recession. Kellogg definitely got a head start in terms of consolidating. It started consolidating as early as uh, 1998. Uh, and then here in 2008, it fell along with the rest of the market. Um, it definitely wasn't very defensive. Um, although I would say that generally the S&P 500 loses like 50% of its value. So um, the fact that it only lost 36% of its value actually says something. And here, most recently, um, at the peak of, of, you know, of Kellogg's ascent here in the middle of 2016, um, Kellogg actually lost around 30% of its value. So think about that for a second. It lost 30% of its value here. And in the 2008 recession, it lost 36% of its value. So safe to say that this was quite the large drop. And right now, I think this is a good buying opportunity. Um, currently, Kellogg is paying, um, I want to say around a 3% dividend yield. Yeah, so three, close to 3.5%, which is awesome. That's like, you know, comparable to something like Procter & Gamble. Um, and basically, you know, any the, the cheapest that you can get Kellogg, the better. Um, obviously, that's the whole point of yield on cost. And um, considering like how well defensive stocks are holding up over the last couple of weeks, um, my assumption would be that the time to get in would be you know closer to soon rather than later. Um, and so yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. So that's it. These are three stocks that definitely jumped out at me. I would recommend these. All of these, obviously, I'm investing in them. So um, I probably wouldn't recommend a stock that I wouldn't buy myself. Um, but obviously, this is not financial advice. So if you guys lose money, I'm sorry. Um, don't do things just because I'm doing them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't have to say that over and over again. But um, anyway, I hope you have a great day. Have a safe Halloween and good luck trading.